How's it going guys? My name is Zach with the Movie Castle and today we're going to be talking about something I found quite recently in the used comics section. Um, this is Night of the Living Dead Volume 1. Now I looked it up on the internet and apparently there are actually a few comics uh, with the Night of the Living Dead title. Um, at least two others. Uh, this is probably due to the copyright-free nature of the movie. Uh, but this one, from what I gather, is more official than the others. Um, because if we look at the spine here, this is actually written uh, by John Rousseau. John Rousseau was the original producer of Night of the Living Dead. Um, he was also... Um, responsible for Return of the Living Dead, although that's pretty much in uh, title only, and then Children of the Living Dead, and My Uncle John is a Zombie. So he's done some uh, some stuff in this field, so this is more official than the, uh, the other runs from what I gather, but I haven't uh, been able to pick those up yet. Uh, this is also volume one of, I believe, three, so there are two more volumes of this, but I haven't uh, found those yet, but when I do, I'll uh, review them on the channel as well. Um, but it's kind of funny they put volume one up so small, I, maybe they didn't know if they were going to get a, a sequel or not. But if we open it up, we can look at the credits there. Let me get you guys in better focus. Uh, but yeah, John Rousseau and Mike Wolfer wrote it. There's the covers, and you see chapters 1 through 4 is kind of a big block, 5, 6, 7, 8. So there's 8 chapters, 1 through 4 is um, basically its own story, and then the other 4 are individual stories. Um, starting off with uh, chapter 1, I suppose. Uh, chapter 1 is basically... Uh, the bin at the diner section. So let me flip to, yeah, there he is. There's, there's Ben. Uh, so this is the most direct prequel to the Night of the Living Dead. You see Ben at a diner before everything all starts out, and you get to see him first seeing the zombies and trying to uh, get away. It's cool to see more of the uh, Ben character, although this is uh, kind of unnecessary because, you know, it's like, oh wow, uh, the big revelation is Ben was at a diner before the, the whole thing started. You know, it's not anything, you know, super big and revolutionary, but it's good to see the character again. Um, there's a few moments in here that call back to, you know, things not everybody knows about Night of the Living Dead. Uh, for instance, here's a, a bus crash, and all the people in the bus crash uh, get up and become zombies. That's because in Night of the Living Dead, it was uh, however you die. It was the bodies of the recently deceased, and a lot of people in later zombie fiction I think it's all about the, uh, the zombie bites, but this is actually um, just however you die, you get up and become a, a zombie. Um, the bodies of the recently deceased. You also get uh, later on you get a example of a zombie using tools because yeah in Night of the Living Dead a few of them used uh, tools so I did like that it uh, emphasized a few of the things that uh, people tend to forget about the original movie. Uh, but yeah oh and uh, you also get to meet the old lady. Uh, her and her daughter are the ones that originally lived in the house from the movie. So there's a fair bit of trivia, and I think somewhere in here you do get to see uh, Barb's car drive up. So that um, that's fun. Uh, but she uh, Barb isn't in it that much. Um, the second story, uh, Chapter 5, because Ben's story goes um, 1 through 4, but yeah, the, uh, the second story, Chapter 5, is all about the uh, the little girl in the basement from the movie. You get to see uh, things kind of from her perspective in the basement, and she's talking to herself in the third person for some reason, and you get to see her, you know, 
from her perspective as she's turning, but plus she uh, she does flashbacks, and you get to see um, what her life was like. You find out uh, she was an orphan, and she was adopted, and she's forced to work in her father's tailor shop all day, and it kind of tosses this guy, uh, the basement guy, into a, a really bad light, making him seem like an even worse parent than you thought. But it is interesting to get like a full backstory for the uh, the basement child there. And yeah, this is probably the the best story in the volume. Uh, moving right along to chapter six. Chapter six, you get a a movie theater. And there's a lady there who is harassed by some punks, and they, of course, come back to be mean to her and uh, her boss that kind of saves her. And at first you're like, what has this story got to do with anything? It's a random drive-in that gets ambushed by zombies. You think, okay, that's, uh, that's zombies, but... What does it have to do with Night of the Living Dead specifically, as it's not just a zombie comic? And, well, it's revealed at the end how it ties in to the movie, and it turns into a very unnecessary uh, backstory. It's kind of interesting to, to know this backstory, but it's like, wow, okay, out of all the characters, this is the uh, the backstory that we, we needed. <laughs> um... But overall, kind of a uh, kind of fun there. Um, moving on to chapter seven. Chapter seven. It's a few of the characters that survived from the Ben story earlier. They're on the road and they're trying to get to the girl's father, who actually turns out to uh, be the newscaster from the original movie, and you get a bit of a follow up with the newscaster character and the uh, the doctor, Dr. Uh, Grimes. So you get to see what happens to uh, those two characters. One thing I also really appreciated from the story is it actually cuts back to right after Night of the Living Dead ended, and you get to see uh, the guy who uh, shot Ben at the end of the Night of the Living Dead actually be really remorseful about what he did and go, I I'm not sure he was a walker. I I feel really sad because he might have been still alive and the, the police chief is like, look, he probably wasn't. But if he was, know that I gave the order and if he was, it was my fault. Don't beat yourself up about it. And it's really cool to see these characters, you know, humanized a little and go, it was an honest mistake. I feel really bad about that. So it, it's really fun to, to cut right back to the end of the original movie. But yeah, this story, uh, pretty long, and it has several focuses. It feels like it should have been multiple chapters, but the Doctor, the newscaster, a few of the characters from the original uh, four chapters, and the tie-in scene to right after Night of the Living Dead. Um, chapter 8, uh, you talk... Oh, and also there's uh, some fun surprises at the end. Chapter 8, I want to show you this cover here. It's the Statue of Liberty, but as a zombie. That's, <laughs> I always thought that was kind of a fun cover, but this story, uh, <laughs> you know, I talked about chapter uh, six seeming like it had nothing to do with anything. Uh, this story even more so. Um, it's people in New York, and they're running from zombies, you know, trying to to get out. And it follows several different characters. It meanders uh, quite a bit. And ultimately, I don't know how this connects to Night of the Living Dead. They do reference, oh, it was in uh, Pennsylvania earlier, and now the zombies are down here. And other than that, though, this is just random, you know, nothing to do with Night of the Living Dead. This is just, hey... Here's what happened in New York a little bit later. There are more zombies, and the story follows so many different characters. You know, at first it's them, then them, then them, and no real point other than look how hard it is to survive the the zombies. You know, and to be fair, yeah, it does get that point across, 
but it comes off as uh, rambling and not really much to do with anything. So I guess to cover it, uh, the Ben story, it was good to see his character, but you know, nothing's, you know, super revolutionary. It's just, hey, he was at a diner earlier, but still love to see Ben. Uh, chapter 5, the backstory to the basement girl, really like that. Uh, chapter 6, um, kind of just another zombie side story, and the tie-in is just kind of, okay, that's a fun fact. Uh, chapter 7, kind of long and rambling, but good to see what happens to a few of the characters. And chapter 8, um... Cool to see what happens in New York, I guess, but really nothing to do with Night of the Living Dead other than same taking place in the same universe. But anyway, this uh, was really fun. It's cool to see, like, I love in comics where you get the backstory to stuff that, you know, you wouldn't necessarily know about, like, oh, here's this or that, and getting to see more of the characters from the movie, knowing little bits of trivia. And if you like that, there's a fair amount of that in this novel, the stories itself are kind of rambling and having where the back half is a bunch of different stuff. You know, you don't get like a main character you're following through all eight, you know, all eight chapters or anything. But it's still uh, fun enough and it's cool to, to see all this stuff. There is one thing though, um, Night of the Living Dead, maybe it's just me. You know, 1968, it, it, it seems, you know, kind of a kind of tame and uh, clean kept, but uh, here's, uh, this is the variant cover to issue three, and I think this kind of illustrates the tone of the comics that is a little bit um, different than what you'd expect from Night of the Living Dead. There's a, a ton of swearing and actually a fair bit of nudity, especially in the final chapter, chapter eight, there were a couple very explicit panels, and I mean, I'm not really prudish or anything, but I just felt that it was, you know, it felt more 80s, you know, like there's a few parts that felt more Return of the Living Dead than Night of the Living Dead, which makes me wonder if they used more of Rousseau's script than they, uh, people thought. But, um, yeah, I keep saying 1968, uh, but it really felt like 1980s, and, you know, it's just a a tonal clash uh, more than anything, you know, just didn't feel like the right atmosphere for the story, but, you know, there's a lot of people I know that aren't going to care about this at all, but it is worth noting this is definitely not a for kids book, and a lot of people classify Night of the Living Dead as, you know, something anybody can watch, and I just thought I'd throw that out there. Oh, and here's a, here's the one shot we get of Barb's car uh, driving up to uh, the grave. But anyway, a fun sort of, you know, story. You get to see more of the Night of the Living Dead world, more of the characters, and you can bug your friends with useless trivia, which is always fun. So an interesting volume, more for the nerds than anybody else, but um, it's it's interesting. It's um, not the greatest graphic novel ever, but for fans of the series and, you know, extremists, it's worth picking up. Uh, but anyway, um, that being said, um, I'll have uh, more stuff in the future. I'm trying to cover a comic every single week on this channel, but I do primarily horror movies, so if you're interested in that, uh, stick around. I'll have more horror coming up. I do about 95% horror on this channel. And uh, to everyone who's watched this far, thank you for watching. And to everyone who's liked and subscribed, thank you. You really are helping this channel out. Down at the bottom there, I'll have a playlist, which should be um, all of my comic reviews. Or, yeah, it should be the comic playlist. But anyway, uh, thanks for liking and subscribing. You really are helping out this channel. Uh, have a good day, and I'll see you guys again very soon.